Well, this is a, uh, a difficult question to answer under these constraints because uh, there were so many uh, early findings that led to uh, uh, ap application of measures uh, almost uh, immediately that influenced public health practice in uh, Latin America and in the uh, rest of the uh, developing world. Uh, and I'll indicate uh, uh, a few of these. It was soon evident that uh, there that was endemic goiter uh, in the villages uh, in Guatemala and in the uh, other uh, member countries. And we knew that this was uh, undesirable and that iodation uh, had uh, prevented it in the United States and, uh, and Canada, in the goiter belt, in uh, uh, Yugoslavia, and in uh, many other parts of, the world, parts of the developed world. And when we came to apply it, however, it turned out that the potassium iodide uh, used in, uh, for iodation in, in the industrialized countries couldn't be used on the crude, moist salt uh, of Central America. It just, it just puddled in the bottom, bottom of the bags. If you dried it and added stabilizing chemicals and put it in a moisture-proof package, it was uh, uh, not only not affordable for the people, but it, uh, they didn't even recognize it as salt. So we set about to find a way. And uh, we did identify a compound from the chemical handbook with iodine that was, uh, uh, but uh, there was no, uh, that was listed as water uh, insoluble. But would it be biologically active? Would it, uh, uh, would the iodine be available? So we set up uh, studies in school children in El Salvador, in Opico and Tonacatepeque, and in uh, uh, Guatemala, uh, it was in uh, um, Santa Maria de Jesus, uh, and uh, in um, Ciudad Vieja. Uh, and uh, the, it was very effective. Uh, there was no difference between the, in, the decrease in goiter in school children in months, just a few months, from either iodide or iodate given as tablets. And then we put the iodate in uh, sacks down on the tropics and other studies and it demonstrated its practicality and uh, persuaded the government of Guatemala uh, and Costa Rica both early to pass laws requiring the iodation of salt. We had we got salt iodation uh, actually functioning on a national scale uh, in a few years in all of the countries of Latin America. It spread to South America, and now this is the method of uh, prevention of goiter of uh, iodation of salt. Uh, employed throughout the developing world. The next example, uh, I had seen in, as an intern in Panama uh, very severe uh, malnutrition of the a type known as marasmus, which is uh, really partial starvation. And uh, We were, seeing, we were seeing in Guatemala a lot of malnutrition in, in children. Not only uh, this wasting type, but uh, in children who developed uh, edema and apathy and so on. Well, uh, it was about, it was the end of the first year 
of NCAP that I attended a WHO FAO expert committee meeting in Geneva at which there was the first report of the uh, distribution and importance of a disease in Africa uh, known by the name Kwashiorkor. And uh, Kwashiorkor had been established in Ghana to be associated with a protein deficiency uh, and infection. Well, and I told the, um, uh, the group that, and, and WHO, that I was sure we had this condition in Central America. They uh, gave me the money to hire a uh, physician to uh, study it, and that uh, physician was Moises Baer, who had just completed two years at the Children's uh, Center in uh, Paris, had heard about NCAP, and was interested in uh, working uh, with it. Well, uh, and, and FAO sent someone to uh, join in the uh, uh, evaluation. And the publication, uh, Kwashiorkor, well, wasn't Kwashior, called Kwashiorkor, because as we got into the literature, we found that Menengelo in Chile had described the disease in great detail in a monograph uh, and under the title Syndrome Pluricurrencial de la Infancia. So uh, that was the title given to what would have been Kwashiorkor in Central America. And uh, that name never stuck. <laughs> So it's still, it's, uh, globally, it's Kwashiorkor. But we set about to learn all that uh, we could. And uh, we very quickly dropped the mortality from uh, anywhere in 20 to 40% down to almost zero uh, by the measures. The work was published, stimulated work in other parts, uh, other parts of the world and uh, represents a second uh, major uh, contribution of NCAP. Uh, a little later, our uh, uh, biochemical uh, studies of nutrients in blood showed vitamin A to be deficient. And Guillermo Arreabe, who by that time had been uh, sent uh, for, to complete a PhD, uh, at, in, at the University of Rochester, was back, and uh, he tried out a system of fortifying sugar with uh, vitamin A, but on a national scale in all of Guatemala and all of Costa Rica uh, with complete success. And this has provided an alternate method of dealing with vitamin A deficiency uh, in developing countries uh, that has, has been uh, adopted by, uh, by many of them. I'd now like to tell you about the uh, origin of the work for which INCAP perhaps is best known throughout the world. And that is a, uh, a low-cost, uh, vegetable-based weaning food for infants and children that mothers can afford, who couldn't possibly afford milk uh, or eggs, uh, which uh, would rob the rest of the family of food entirely. And yet, when you're stopped on the roadside for any reason, and a mother would bring forward a, a baby with the signs and symptoms of Kwashiorkor, You'd know that baby would be would die within a few weeks, and what could you tell her? Uh, she couldn't afford an egg. She couldn't afford milk, as I noted, uh, and so we set about to see what what we could do about it. And uh, soy was not available as a protein source. It wasn't grown in Central America, and we didn't want to start something with imported. Uh, food from the, from the United States. And uh, one by one, the potential sources were eliminated for one reason or another until we came to cottonseed flour. 
And cottonseed flour uh, protein would be excellent to mix with the whole ground corn uh, or the lime, lime treated uh, corn. But uh, it uh, had, uh, as commercially produced, had uh, too much of a toxic pigment called gossipol. And the United Nations had established a safe limit for gospel uh, for infants and young children. Uh, and the question was how to, how to meet that within the uh, economic constraints. Well, uh, with a consultant from uh, USDA, we visited a, a major cotton plant, cotton uh, seed mill in uh, Nicaragua, and uh, came up with the idea of processing it more slowly, throwing the bran back in. We could get the gospel out in the oil so that the, the, me, the cottonseed meal could be uh, used, and the, and, the, and the nutty flavor contributed. Well, how, how would people view this? A atolis, um, just cereal gruels, were very common and fed to, uh, fed to children, particularly atole de maize, a, a corn uh, mixture, but uh, would, did not have adequate protein value to prevent uh, protein, the protein malnutrition of Kwashiorkor. And uh, so in, we tested the a optimum combination of, uh, of whole ground uh, corn and cottonseed uh, flour with, with some other uh, nutrients uh, in uh, a wide variety of animals first, and uh, rats, and uh, calves, and pigs, and so on. And uh, then uh, it, it turned out that we really couldn't distinguish between the protein value of the protein in this cottonseed um, and uh, corn mixture from that of uh, soy protein or milk protein. And we had uh, two anthropologists uh, in going into different uh, villages to find out how to present this to the people and uh, what uh, uh, and uh, its acceptability. And they reported that if this were presented as a more nutritional atole, they would give it to their children and, and uh, they would understand. And uh, this, is, this is the way it worked out. Uh, and it, uh, it very soon acquired not only a reputation as an infant food, but it became popular uh, really as a, uh, a, healthier, a healthier food. The question uh, came at one point, what should we call it? And it was Susanna Casa uh, of Panama who suggested INCAP uh, arena, um, arena being the Spanish for flour. And I, had, I hesitated because we were committing the reputation of the Institute to uh, really a, a commercial product, but I was persuaded. And uh, that name has proved to be uh, a very uh, fortunate one. And in Caparina, soon became known around the world, and it uh, was a great success in Guatemala. And uh, now, well, 50 years later almost, uh, it is still being produced in Guatemala. And when I talked with the producer at a congress in Chile, uh, a year ago, he said they were building a plant in Panama to produce it. Well, uh, to give you an idea of the outreach of INCAP, the Minister of Health of India heard about this in a famine year when the U.S. was sending 15 million tons of wheat to India to, for famine relief 
but you can't feed that to young children. So uh, he had heard about Incaparina and uh, uh, asked uh, through, um, actually uh, through the U.S. State Department, asked them to uh, uh, send me to India. And I uh, arrived, and the first day uh, I was spent with the deputy head of the uh, Indian Council of Medical Research, who was a nutritionist and, uh, a, uh, and a good friend, and we completed and got approved by the uh, uh, director of the Indian Council of Medical Research a, for, a, a formula of specifications, nutrient content of a mixture uh, for India. And then the next day I went to Hyderabad because there was supposed to be a cottonseed plant there and it was, it was too small and, and uh, uh, imp uh, impractical. And the only thing that we could find was peanut flour. Uh, but the problem with peanut flour uh, was uh, aflatoxin, which is a mold uh, growing on, on peanuts, uh, which is quite toxic. Again, we knew the limit uh, allowable of aflatoxin in the uh, flour, but how could it be achieved? It was achieved by having a slowly moving belt 12 people on each side picking out the moldy peanuts. Then it went up and uh, went on a, a cracked in half. And then a, another belt with uh, six people on each side picking out the moldy halves. And if everybody did their job, the batch coming out of that would have a low enough gospel that it could go into an incaparina like uh, mixture. Uh, with uh, wheat. And uh, this is what happened. Uh, we uh, went to the Central Food Technological Research Institute in Mysore, made up a number of different formulas and flavors, brought in all of the women in the, working in this big institute on a Saturday to do a taste test. On Monday, I was in Delhi getting the uh, approval of the Ministry of Health. And uh, within a month, they, there were pl three plants producing this uh, in India. Now, uh, I couldn't begin to tell you about the impact of uh, uh, the Incaparina concept, which was never a formula, it was a concept uh, in, in other countries and other parts of the world but it's been very considerable. As we developed and interpreted the mandate, it was first to study the nutrition problems of Central America and Panama, which we did uh, uh, promptly and, and thoroughly through dietary and uh, 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 clinical surveys. The second was to find practical solutions to them. And I've mentioned two of these, the iodation of salt with potassium iodate uh, in caparina. Well, I mentioned three, I mentioned the vitamin A. Uh, also, but there are uh, quite a number of others. Uh, so we found solutions to problems, practical solutions to problems. Then the next thing was to get the policy changes, to get, get them adopted and accepted. And uh, again, uh, by putting a strong emphasis on this, and the cooperation of the directors of public health of Central America. In the period when in the first 10 years of INCAP, uh, Central America had, uh, and Panama, had outstanding directors of public health uh, who were really understood it, were well-trained and dedicated. They were, they were the ones who represented the ministers on the governing council, and they were the... Uh, they were uh, strong supporters, and they did uh, adopt the 
in cap suggestions as they evolved. The uh, third objective that I mentioned uh, was not uh, just to uh, uh, identify the policies, but to uh, p provide the training for, per for personnel to uh, develop and apply and manage uh, nutrition programs. So that uh, uh, the development of a uh, first, a master's degree program for uh, individuals from, from the region who got a master's degree in their own, from their own universities for uh, uh, one to two years of work in INCAP. And then the best of these could be identified for uh, fellowships and uh, for uh, further training, but or uh, they might just return to their countries, but with the added uh, experience and uh, competency. Uh, there had been established in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, an uh, institute for the training of dietitians. Uh, but there was no, no other uh, in uh, the rest of Latin America at the time or Central America, and in, uh, Susanne Casa, uh, a Panamanian, set up the first school of dietetics. And again, they got their degrees from their own universities, but this was a, uh, a rigorous three-year uh, program that, that they went through. Uh, I, there were, uh, by the time uh, INCAP had reached its 25th year, uh, there had been about 200 uh, theses uh, of uh, Central Americans graduating from the, from the university, including the medical school. So uh, identify the problem, find solutions, help the countries apply the solutions through uh, promotion of sound policies and the training of personnel. Uh, this, this is an impossible uh, question to answer because uh, there were so many. I've mentioned the uh, identification of potassium iodate. That certainly has been globally important. I've mentioned the example of uh, uh, in Caparina. Uh, I've mentioned the example of uh, vitamin A. But I think another of the projects uh, that ought to be mentioned is the Inter-American Atherosclerosis Project, where they collected uh, aortas from uh, 12 general hospitals uh, in uh, uh, Central and South America, uh, stained them for, uh, for fat, and uh, not only the aortas, but also the coronary vessels, so you could tell the degree of, uh, of atherosclerosis, and also had the samples from Charity Hospital in uh, New Orleans and from uh, uh, Copenhagen. And then they spread these out on uh, long tables, and four pathologists uh, went down and anonymously graded them for the degree of atherosclerosis. And this uh, made a very, very clear demonstration at the time that it wasn't fully appreciated or uh, accepted that coronary artery disease uh, was an unnecessary uh, form of of malnutrition. The there was there was never enough uh, coronary occlusion in the populations of uh, Latin America, uh, with individual exceptions, uh, compared with the increase beginning uh, in the developing country hospitals in the twenties and by the 
time individuals got into their mid-30s, they were beginning to have uh, symptoms of, uh, uh, of coronary heart disease. And this stimulated an enormous amount of, of work globally and contributed to the general uh, acceptance uh, of uh, the nutritional uh, origin concept of uh, coronary heart disease. Another uh, area uh, would, would be the work on anemia. And uh, not only did uh, INCAP uh, demonstrate the prevalence and uh, some of the significance of anemia uh, and show that it was uh, primarily uh, due to uh, iron deficiency, but uh, also uh, it uh, I related it to susceptibility to infectious disease. Now this leads me to, I think, what would be the second major contribution of INCAP that I haven't mentioned yet, and that is the interactions of nutrition and infection. At that time in the um, 1950s, textbooks of nutrition didn't mention infection. Textbooks of infection certainly never mentioned nutrition. There was no concept of the relationship. And um, we, observe, we kept observing that kwashiorkor, severe protein deficiency in children, followed uh, an infection, maybe several episodes of diarrhea, or very specifically one of the communi common communicable diseases of childhood, particularly uh, uh, measles. And uh, I came up and gave a lecture at Harvard uh, on, I think, entitled Nutrition and Infection. And, it, uh, and I also gave one in Hyderabad in India to Congress. They, it met very poor reception. People didn't think it was important. And uh, that was when we set about uh, collating the evidence from the INCAP uh, research and uh, also scanning the literature and uh, wrote, a mo wrote a monograph that uh, was entitled Interactions of Nutrition and Infection, published by the World Health Organization. And that started a whole whole new field. Uh, that that had, has had tremendous impact. Now, uh, I mentioned iron deficiency, but what I didn't mention was that uh, there was a professor, a uh, Peruvian, uh, in the department at MIT who uh, wanted to extend published studies in rats to studies the effect of iron deficiency on the cognitive development of children and uh, the permanent uh, changes that iron deficiency in early, in, uh, early infancy uh, have. And uh, so the, uh, the first demonstration uh, of that uh, was at INCAP uh, in Guatemala and then other investigators and came, well, another investigator came to Guatemala and later Costa Rica, and from the Costa Rica studies, but also under the aegis of INCAP, um, followed them up for 15 years, and the uh, those who were iron, def uh, iron deficient uh, in the first year of life, even if they were treated with iron, and uh, no longer iron deficient, 15 years later had poor scores on uh, cognitive tests, had behavioral problems, some uh, uh, skeletal muscle coordination uh, problems. 
uh, and so on. And of course, once that literature started coming out, then it was replicated in the, in other parts uh, other parts of the world. So, which of these is the more important? I, I can't tell you, but I can tell you for sure, for certain, that the cumulative impact of Pajo's investment in INCAP in the uh, first uh, uh, 36 years uh, has been tremendous, has been enormous. And INCAP still, name still has its mystique as I travel developing countries throughout the world. Now, I was concerned that the uh, work uh, of INCAP was not all indexed because it was published before it, it uh, was a part of the uh, modern information system. So I got the division chiefs who had done the work uh, to write chapters summarizing the INCAP contributions in their, um, uh, in their field. And uh, this was a labor of love, which was very productive. It was published in March of last year in the, uh, uh, the Nutrition Bulletin of the, Inter of, uh, the International Nutrition Foundation and uh, the uh, United Nations uh, uh, University. And uh, this work now is permanently captured uh, in the modern uh, information system.